Hello everyone and welcome to Friday Message. A couple people commented that they really liked uh, last week's prayer, the prayer of the God who fell from heaven uh, from this book by John Shea. And I thought I would share my favorite prayer from this book this week. It's entitled, The Prayer of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Those who do not believe in a higher harmony will balk when told an accident crunched in the parking lot at the very moment the altar boy's nose began to bleed. He bled on the surplus, the cassock, the candle, the other altar boy, and the priest's unlaced shoe, which bulgingly carried an ace-bandaged ankle. The priest was stuffing a purificator up the boy's nose, damming the blood into his eyeballs, when the lector asked, How do you pronounce E-L-I-S-H-A? And the organist pounded the entrance, Praise to the Lord. They processed the bleeding, the halt, and the mute unto the altar of God. Saturday was late and liquored and delivered God's people sunglassed and slumping to the epilogue of weekend life, the Gothic Church. They were not the community of liberal theology nor the scrubbed inhabitants of film strips. They were one endless face and that face was asleep. May the grace of our Lord, a hungry pause for repentance, a quick feast of sins. The lector murdered the prophets once again and bypassed the section where a certain E-L-I-S-H-A was having prophetic truck with a widow. The homily parlayed a fairly clear gospel you are either with me or against me, into sentences of vacillation and paragraphs of doublethink. The priest ran to the creed for refuge, only to find that a special creed was prepared for this morning's liturgy by Mrs. Zardek, I believe in butterflies and the breath of the courage of the president of the liturgical assembly drained into the bolt holes of communion rail days. The offertory gifts never made it. They were dropped by an elderly couple, we never liked the new mass anyway, who collided with a small but speedy child whose high-heeled mother was in clickety-clack pursuit and whose name was Roger Come Back. The consecration was consistent. The priest lifted the host and said, this is my blood. Instantly aware of his Eucharistic goof, but also momentarily in the grip of a bizarre logic, he changed the wine into Jesus' body. Then, with his whole mind, heart, and soul, he genuflected, never to rise, to a mystery which masks itself as mistake and a power which perfects itself in weakness. A mystery which masks itself as mistake and a power which perfects itself in weakness. I love that prayer. We want to do things right. I always love it when there's a new Eucharistic minister or acolyte or lector and they'll get nervous before their first time in one of those in one of those ministries because they they want to do things right and that's wonderful but I always tell them it's all right even if you make a mistake God is praised and God is glorified and God is pleased in more than 30 years 
of presiding and celebrating the Eucharist, I have made countless mistakes. And yet God is always praised and glorified and pleased. Our desire to please God pleases God. Our desire to want to do well, and it's a wonderful thing to want to do well and to do well because it's beautiful, and profound, and meaningful. But even in the midst of our foibles and our mistakes, that power and that mystery and that beauty come through. Our desire to please God pleases God. God is pleased with our best efforts. My dad these days is, is, is slowing down at 95 and he's always complaining, I, I can't do what I used to do. I can't do all the things that I used to do. And I always tell him, God is pleased with what you can do. You can't do everything you used to. But God is pleased with what you can, with the ways you continue to give yourself. Our desire to pray and be in communion with God pleases God. Sometimes it can be challenging to pray. There's so many things going on in the world that are on our minds and our hearts. There can be so many things going on in our lives with ourselves or with a loved one, a child or a grandchild. These things, these things press upon us. It could be hard to bring those things before God in prayer. But our desire to pray, that desire to bring those things before God pleases God. And even if we might do that in, in incomplete and stumbling ways, God is pleased and God hears us. We don't need to be perfect. Don't need to be perfect. We need to be faithful. And when we are faithful, God is pleased. A mystery which masks itself as mistake and a power which perfects itself in weakness. Here are a few things coming up, lots of things happening, a few things coming up. Um, if you're seeing this on Friday or on Saturday morning, uh, Ernie Hoon's memorial service is at 2 p.m. on Saturday uh, here in church. Or we're going to have a social hour and coffee hour outdoors this weekend. Saturday social hour after the 5 o'clock service. Sunday coffee hour after the 9.30 service. Uh, when you're here, please sign up to host social hour or coffee hour. There's a sheet on the bulletin board outside the kitchen. You can also contact Susan in the parish office to sign up. Really happy about social hour and coffee hour in person coming back. Remember, next weekend, uh, next Sunday, October 31st, we're switching to two Sunday services. We'll have an 8 a.m. service and a 10.30 a.m. service. So two services on Sundays beginning next Sunday, October 31st. Men's Fellowship is Tuesday morning at 8.30, and that is hybrid. Wednesday Eucharist and Prayers for Healing take place in the Angel Chapel each Wednesday at 9 a.m., Rediscovering the Episcopal Church. We've had two wonderful sessions so far, one on the Bible. And uh, this week, Reverend Allen gave a great session on our prayer book. Those can You can view those if you didn't have a chance to see them. You, you can view those on the website, and I encourage you to do that. All of the sessions from this series on Rediscovering the Episcopal Church will make their way to our website, and you can see them there. But you are also most welcome to join in each Wednesday. So next Wednesday, Doug will be doing a session on spirituality. That's at 6 p.m. and that's on Zoom. And you can find the link in the Friday Brief. Rediscovering the Episcopal Church. Thursday Bible study at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll, and then looking a little bit forward, we will have prayer and potluck on Wednesday, November 3rd. That begins at 6 p.m. Wednesday, November 3rd, prayer and potluck. That's going to be the, uh, the brat feast. And then, looking way ahead, 
Uh, my celebration of a new ministry is finally nailed down. It is going to be on February 12th, Saturday, February 12th at 2 p.m. Celebration of a new ministry. Bishop Smith will be here with us to install me uh, as rector officially, and there will be a reception to follow, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, the 5 o'clock service that Saturday, February 12th will be canceled. Uh, in lieu of the uh, celebration of a new ministry at 2 p.m. And I'm thrilled about that. Not the service being canceled. The celebration of a new ministry. I think that's it. Be safe and well, and God bless you.